On October 22nd, we held Vanderbilt University's first ever full staff assembly, where we recognized the extraordinary achievements of our staff colleagues. While many staff members joined us live for this virtual event, others have jobs that didn't allow them to be near a computer during the online gathering. To those of you who weren't able to join us, I'm grateful that you're taking the time to watch the assembly now. Your hard work and dedication throughout this unprecedented year has exemplified our one Vanderbilt spirit of collaboration. The time and effort you put in for our students, faculty members, and your fellow staff is critical and will continue to be critical to Vanderbilt's mission. I look forward to addressing all of you at future staff assemblies. Until then, enjoy the fall 2020 staff assembly. Thank you. Hello, thank you for joining us for the first ever fall staff assembly at Vanderbilt University. I'm Eric Kopstein, Vice Chancellor for Administration, and I am so pleased to welcome all of you watching today. The purpose of today's event is to recognize you, Vanderbilt staff. Your work impacts every inch of our campus and every facet of our university's mission. Without you, the research, the scholarship, teaching, and service that happen on our campus and in our broader community simply would not be possible. We often talk about a collaborative one Vanderbilt spirit. This is something I've seen all of you embody for many years, but never more so than during this past year. Across the university, Vanderbilt staff have anchored down and stepped up throughout this pandemic. You've demonstrated your dedication to your work, to your colleagues, and to our beloved community. During today's event, we'll present the Anchor Down Step Up Excellence Awards to recognize by name just a few of the staff who have gone above and beyond this year. Before the awards presentation, we'll hear from Chancellor Daniel Deermeyer and University Staff Advisory Council President Caroline Johnston. The Fall Staff Assembly is a new tradition. Modeled on our longstanding custom of faculty assemblies, we worked with Chancellor Deermeyer to create this assembly to provide a key moment to come together as a university staff to hear directly from him about the university's progress and priorities, to hear from your staff representation in USAC, and to pause and honor excellence among our staff. In the spring, we'll honor staff with another assembly during which we will receive updates from our chancellor on the progress and accomplishments of the academic year, and where we'll present additional staff awards. We believe it is critically important to have these moments to pause, to reflect, and to celebrate our collective positive impact on our university and on our mission. It is now my pleasure to introduce Chancellor Deermeyer. Daniel Deermeyer stepped into the role of Vanderbilt's ninth chancellor on July 1st, although I assure you he was working very closely with the university for many months leading up to that start date. He most recently served as provost at the University of Chicago, where he also served as the dean of the Harris School of Public Policy. Our chancellor is a first-generation college graduate and originally from Berlin, Germany. He believes in the power of education and in the mission of our university to transform lives and move society forward, particularly in moments like the present, when higher education's role in our global community is more important than ever. Chancellor Deermeyer, thank you so much for being here today. And now I'd like to welcome you to the podium. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Kopstein. You and your division have done so much to support all Vanderbilt staff members since the pandemic began. I'd also like to thank the University Staff Advisory Council for their vision and support. And we will hear more from Caroline Johnson 
USAC's current president in a few minutes. And to all of you, welcome to Vanderbilt's first ever fall staff assembly. My plan is for all of us to come together from across the entire university twice every year in the fall and in the spring. These assemblies are a symbol of our one Vanderbilt spirit and a chance for us to take stock of all of our accomplishments and to reflect on the vital importance of our work. Here at Vanderbilt, we believe in the power of human potential for our students, faculty, and staff. Whether you work in administration, academic affairs, communications, IT, finance, facilities, dining, or any other critical area, you are driving our mission to support world-class scholarship and provide an empowering education to the leaders of tomorrow. Your work directly impacts our faculty, our students, and our white community, especially during this historic moment. And it is laying a foundation for future generations to continue our progress. We all know that this year has had many challenges. Some of you were among the very first people to return to campus this spring and many unknowns in order to perform the, our essential duties. Others have been working remotely for months, often balancing childcare, family, and other responsibility. But what unites all of you is that you have gone far and above what was required for you, and you have stepped up. You have proven that crises can lead to a deepened sense of community and new opportunities for innovation. As I mentioned, when many of us met this past June for our very first virtual gathering, I've seen your contributions in vivid detail. You continue to secure our campus and care for our students. You optimize our technology and enable learning to continue, both in person and through virtual platforms. You make sure our community receives the information they need and that Vanderbilt's story continues to be told far and wide. Thanks to you, Vanderbilt is in a strong position. By inviting students back to campus this fall, we have done something that many people thought we could not do. The return to campus plan took countless hours of work from our staff members. I know this was a major endeavor, one that required from you unprecedented coordination, innovation, and trust in our common purpose. We know this was not the easy path, but we chose this path because our mission demanded it. We invited students back to campus this fall because we're committed to offering the educational experience that happens when different people with varying interests, viewpoints, and backgrounds come together. This process of learning from each other as members of one community is the basis for a transformative education, and it certainly applies to our employees as well. Real progress is made when people with varying skill sets and experiences come together, and you prove this time and time again every day. I hope you share the pride of what we have accomplished over the last six months and the confidence in our ability to drive our mission going forward. As we look ahead, it is critical that each member of our community continues to anchor down and step up. Whatever you're working on, whether you're working on campus or remotely, we care about your well-being. This August, we send our staff members a Vanderbilt mask and a letter from me about our collective effort to stay as healthy and safe as possible. Everyone's decision to follow protocols will help keep our buildings open and enable students to spend more time learning on campus. It will also provide a safer environment for your colleagues and our fellow citizens of Nashville. Because of your and our students and faculty's enormous efforts, we are off to a promising start this fall. We plan to continue offering in-person, on-campus classes this spring, governed by our current safety protocols. We'll also to continue to offer remote learning to students off campus through virtual platforms. For those of you who have been working remotely, you will continue to do so for the time being. And I want to thank you for adapting to these circumstances and for remaining nimble 
and collaborative even when you are not physically together. And of course, as we move forward, you will be informed of any changes to the remote work plan by our specific department or manager. Stepping up to the challenges of the pandemic has extended beyond our planning for return to campus and remote work. Like the rest of the country, and higher education in particular, Vanderbilt has faced economic challenges. But thanks to the careful stewardship of Chancellor Emeritus Nicholas Ezepos and Provost Susan Arwenti, along with the reduction of expenses which we had to make this spring, we are in a position of relative financial strength compared to many of our peers. And of course, we have had to make some difficult decisions. We did not have to cut salaries or scale back benefits as some of other universities have. To be sure, we continue to face an uncertain economic environment and we have many difficult decisions ahead. We will continue to exercise caution and flexibilities as this unprecedented situation requires. However, thanks to our strong foundation, we will be able to reduce the uncertainty ahead. And better yet, we're able to think broadly and optimistically about our next chapter. A cornerstone of these future plans involves building up out our work in equity, diversity, and inclusion. By many means, Vanderbilt has made exemplary progress in these areas, but we're not satisfied. Last week, we, filled, we released our annual diversity report, which details many of our accomplishments, including those spearheaded, spearheaded by our staff members. I encourage you to spend some time with the report and the corresponding video. Some of the work highlighted in the diversity report includes that of Staff Wave Council, which is committed to supporting women at Vanderbilt and ensuring that everyone in our community can succeed, regardless of their gender. It also details how the Office for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion and Human Resources work together to launch a new cluster of employee resource groups. Those include the Association of Vanderbilt Black Faculty and Staff and the LBGTQI plus staff and faculty affinity group. University leadership is also working on several EDI initiatives, many of which have been brought to life through the new Board of Trust Ad Hoc Committee on Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. There's always more work to be done. We can be proud, but we should never be satisfied. We need to strive to go beyond our limitations, and we must continue to want to lean, to learn to learn from each other. When we hear a new perspective, we should seek to understand it. And when we disagree, which is natural and healthy, we should do so without bitterness. The more ways in which we can differ from each other, the more we can learn from each other. And this is especially true at a leading research university that values collegiality. Another important part of diversity is celebrating our past and honoring the trailblazers at Vanderbilt across our city and our nation. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Day is an important time for these reflections. Though our students won't be back on campus for this upcoming MLK Day, we're developing plans to honor the legacy of Dr. King on that special day. To this end, I'm also delighted to announce that Martin Luther King Jr. Day will now be a paid staff holiday at Vanderbilt. Your colleagues in USAC advocated for the staff holiday and their efforts a great example of shared governance and the importance of speaking up. In addition, I'm happy to announce that the university will be granting two administrative closure days at the beginning of the winter break. Paid time off for staff will begin on Tuesday, December 22nd, instead of Thursday, December 24th. I hope that these paid days off will provide a moment to unwind and catch up with family and friends before the holidays. Clearly, this is much needed. Now more than ever, it is important that we find these moments to slow down and recharge. Please consult with your manager with any questions about your ability to take this time or any other special situations that may arise. We're all committed to supporting your well-being 
and a sense of balance in your lives. Finally, I want to touch base on our campus planning efforts and on future VU. Even with recent and necessary changes to our campus density and transportation patterns, future VU is a critical model of how we will live, work, and team together. It's a core pillar of our academic strategic plan and our next chapter as a university. As part of the future of the EU plan, we opened the doors to our newest residential college, the Nicholas Exeppes College, this August. We also finished construction on new facilities at the Peabody campus. And in addition, we're making progress at the West End Neighborhood Project in imagining new ways to implement our guiding principles of preservation, connectivity, and sustainability. Also, we continue to access mobility and transportation, which I know is a very important topic for all of us. The Division of Administration is conducting a series of surveys about commuting in light of COVID-19, and I hope you will all participate. In September, we launched a new daily parking program that will increase sustainable commuting and flexibility in regard to on-campus parking options. And earlier this summer, our Move VU plan received an $8.4 million commitment, largely from the Tennessee Department of Transportation, that will help advance our planning. This is all to say our efforts are moving forward. We are focused on addressing the imminent challenges and daily tasks brought forth by COVID-19, but we're also considering the needs of our university and our employees on a wider scale for many years to come. I truly believe that times of upheaval tend to bring out the best in humanity. And this is continuously exemplified by Vanderbilt staff. You have stepped up as a community of compassionate and thoughtful individuals. You have been diligent and consistent, innovative and adaptive. Our success this year was never guaranteed. It was the result of your hard work, perseverance, and expertise. I do not take our process for granted, and we remain at a pivotal moment. We must continue to work together to maintain this momentum. But I believe deeply in the collaborative spirit of one Vanderbilt and your ability to play a vital role in our scholarly and educational mission. I wish you and your family well, and I look forward to our future. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Caroline Johnson, this year's president of the University Staff Advisory Council. Caroline also serves as a director in our Division of Development and Alumni Relations. Thank you again, and please welcome Caroline. Thank you, Chancellor Deermeyer, and many thanks to all of you for joining our inaugural fall staff assembly. I am grateful to the chancellor and his team for hosting this event and for recognizing the importance of gatherings like this. These opportunities for us to come together formally as staff members is especially meaningful as many of us continue to work remotely. Our offices and day-to-day -day routines certainly look different right now, but we are still united by our values and our culture. Following today's assembly, I hope we can leave feeling even closer to Vanderbilt. As the Chancellor mentioned, I am currently serving as the President of the University Staff Advisory Council, otherwise known as USAC. To share a little bit more about our council, we are an advisory group to the university focused on issues that affect Vanderbilt and those served by the council. We work across the university's administration and staff community to resolve problems, develop policies, and advance best practices. We are comprised of 102 members across 20 groups, which represent all areas of staff in non-union roles across the university. This year's USAC team of officers includes Vice President and President-elect Tiffany Lawrence Givens, Secretary Jeanette Wolf, and Treasurer Michael Pring, who is also a past president of USAC. Thanks to each of you for your leadership and continued service. 
In addition, I would like to acknowledge Jeff Loudon, who served as last year's president and put many of our current initiatives into motion. Thank you, Jeff. Working with these colleagues, among many others in attendance, albeit virtually, makes me even more confident in USAC and our ability to make a difference in the lives of our staff members. In the past few years, our council has been quite busy. We have advanced progress on evergreen topics like sustainability and communications, and we've also addressed the pressing and often unexpected issues brought forth by COVID-19. None of our work would be possible without our staff members' ongoing support, engagement, and insights. I'd like to talk for a moment about our committees, which play an integral part in USAC. USAC has five main committees, which are focused on communications, events, membership, rules and administration, and staff life. Each of these committees is led by two co-chairs who do so much to bring your suggestions and feedback to life. We also have representatives who serve on university standing committees focused on key topics like benefits and traffic and parking. And in FY20, we also established an ad hoc committee focused on equity, diversity, and inclusion. This group is dedicated to creating a culture of inclusive collaboration and to supporting all of our professional and support staff members, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, age, or disability. I'll talk a little bit more about their specific initiatives in a moment. USAC also has several core initiatives in addition to our committee-specific work. We continue to support the Employee Hardship Fund through Kroger's Community Rewards Program. This fund is available to any full-time employee who is experiencing a temporary hardship. It is administered through EAP Work-Life Connections. During the 2020 fiscal year, more than $4,300 was awarded to employees in need through this effort. Last year, we collected just over $6,200 from Kroger Community Rewards. By connecting your Kroger card to this fund, a portion of your purchases will help to support the fund. This applies to non-Vanderbilt staff members too, so be sure to encourage family and friends to connect their cards as well. This is a fantastic way to support your colleagues and the Vanderbilt family at large, all while doing a little grocery shopping. Another focus for USAC has been the observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a paid holiday. This summer, the Staff Council submitted a proposal to university leadership requesting that employees have this day off in observance of the holiday. Given Vanderbilt's continued efforts surrounding equity, diversity, and inclusion, we believe it is critical that our staff members are able to participate in events surrounding MLK Day. It's also an opportunity to reflect on themes of equality and perseverance and the many ways that Dr. King impacted our lives for the better. As you heard from Chancellor Deermeyer, our university leadership is actively turning our proposal into a reality, and we are incredibly grateful for that. We are also collaborating with Dr. Churchwell and the Division of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion on staff programming as part of the Heritage Calendar Project. This will include special events to coincide with Native American Heritage Month, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Black History Month, and many others. Most recently, the university held robust virtual programming for Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th through October 15th. Our events committee is also hard at work thinking about other ways for our staff members to come together virtually. We're planning to launch a series of virtual coffee breaks later this fall so that staff members from all areas of the university can join together for casual conversation. In addition, our Staff Life Committee is working on their recommendations for additional professional development opportunities. These would dovetail with the initiatives coming forward through Human Resources Employee Learning and Organizational Effectiveness Team. Such efforts are critical to ensuring that every staff member can reach his or her full potential as both employees and people. Thank you to everyone who is involved in this important endeavor. Before we move on to the awards portion of the event and celebrate our incredible colleagues who have done so much to support the university throughout the pandemic, I wanted to end with a personal note. I'm one of those odd but lucky birds, someone who has known since early on what they wanted to do in life. As a result, I've had the pleasure of working at colleges and universities, both large and small, and I came to Vanderbilt in the summer of 2015. 
Nashville is actually an ancestral home for my family, yet I hadn't been to visit until that summer. During the interview process, I was able to explore the city and campus, both of which felt like a place I could instantly call home. In the time since, I've had the pleasure of working in DAR, Development and Alumni Relations, on the Alumni Relations team. I quickly began to recognize that Vanderbilt's community and experience was a unique one. Colleagues are genuinely invested in one another, both personally and professionally. Colleagues are also incredibly proud to work at Vanderbilt and continuously push it to be a better place for all. Today is my first day on campus in many months. I'm happy to share, for those of you who may be at home, so much of what we love is still here. The leaves are changing, students are moving about, mixing and mingling, albeit with masks and a little distance, and the idea of one Vanderbilt is certainly strong. Your commitment to Vanderbilt and resiliency during this unexpected time just simply does not go unnoticed, and I just want to say how immensely proud I am of all of us. Thank you again for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to hand the program back over to Chancellor Deermeyer, who will host the presentation of the Anchor Down Step Up Excellence Awards. Thank you, Caroline, for those remarks and for your service to our university community. It's now my honor to present the Anchor Down Step Up Excellence Awards. These are special one-time awards designed to mark this extraordinary and unprecedented time. Today we will present awards to several individuals and teams. And uh, who, those, those are individuals and teams who have gone above and beyond to protect our community and to foster innovation since the very start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Clearly, there are so many contributions to celebrate. Our pandemic response really has been a one Vanderbilt effort, and we're all in this together. The individuals and teams we're recognizing today represent just a handful of the hundreds of staff members who continue to make this unprecedented semester possible. At the Spring Staff Assembly next semester, I will present the Commodore Award and the Diversity Leadership Award, and we have plans to launch a new series of annual awards to recognize staff excellence. In addition, several divisions have their own award programs to recognize staff, and uh, the goals of all of these efforts is to honor and celebrate the tremendous contributions our staff make in support of our mission. Thanks again to each of you for anchoring down and stepping up during this pivotal time. We will now begin with the Anchor Down Step Up Excellence Awards for individuals who have gone above and beyond since the start of the pandemic. Today, we have nine individuals who are receiving this prestigious honor. As part of the award, each individual will also receive a monetary prize. The first person we're honoring today is Trakeda Brooks in campus dining. In addition to her many responsibilities in the kitchen, Trakeda has eagerly stepped up as an internal COVID ambassador. She has become a trusted expert on health and safety initiatives in campus dining and beyond. Since the start of the academic year, she has worked hard to educate dining guests on new circulation plans, while also encouraging physical distancing among guests and co-workers. Trakeda, thank you for all your efforts. You have done so much to keep our community safe and are most deserving of this award. Congratulations. Next, we honor Jessamine Davis with the Office of Emergency Preparedness and Vanderbilt University Public Safety. Jessamine led the cross-functional team that developed the symptom monitoring features at the Vandy Safe app. She's also a member of the Public Health Central Command Center, uh, which we also call the COVID Committee, in addition to her responsibility as Vanderbilt's fire safety coordinator. Thank you, Jessamine, for all your hard work in helping our campus community monitor symptoms and slow the spread of COVID-19. In procurement and payment services, 
Kelly Fager, has provided model leadership in preparing all areas of campus to safely handle the COVID-19 outbreak. Her contributions have led to timely and cost-effective procurement and deployments of protective gear, plexiglass barriers in our classrooms and dining areas, hotel rooms for students, for student isolation spaces, and testing kits for returning students. She has been flexible and supportive in her role with this critical team. Many thanks and congratulations, Kennedy. We are also honoring Andrea George from the Sustainability and Environmental Management Group. Andrea has been a key player in the university's response to the pandemic. She was the first person to take the lead on testing and dealing with positive cases, even as our city and state were still ramping up their response capabilities. She can rival almost anyone on our campus for the total numbers of our work since February. Throughout that time, she has gone far, far above and beyond her role, from developing contract tracing protocols to launching Vanderbilt Public Health Central Command Center. Andrea, thank you for your incredible work to keep our community as safe and healthy as possible. We would not be here without your efforts. Congratulations. Next up is Shanithia Lewis from the Vanderbilt University Police Department. Sergeant Lewis has been instrumental to many parts of campus life, in addition to managing the, additional, the initial public health ambassador doors programs. She also developed a form for security PHA members to streamline the university's COVID-19 response systems. Throughout the planning process for students return to campus, Sergeant Lewis helped identify high traffic areas and, remedi and remedied issues in and around Rand and the Martha, Martha Rivers Ingrams Commons, both key hubs, hubs on our campus. Sergeant Lewis, thank you for all that you do to protect our campus community. Congratulations on this great honor. We are also honoring Sergeant Lewis' colleague in the Vanderbilt University Police Department, Carmen Marks. Vanderbilt's ability to provide efficient and ongoing testing for COVID-19 has been a critical factor in enabling our safe return to campus. Through her role in overseeing the campus testing center, Carmen has worked tirelessly to ensure that the center operates smoothly. I'm daily, I'm grateful for the daily report she provides to university leadership and applaud the care she demonstrated in responding to the needs of students during this very challenging time. Thank you so much, Carmen, for your exemplary service and dedication. Congratulations. Next, we are honoring Chris Myers from Vanderbilt Law School. In preparation for our return to campus, Chris worked tirelessly to set up buildings and reorganize classrooms in the law school. And I've seen this myself when visiting some of the classes there. From determining pathways and signage to producing video content that welcomed and informed students, he has helped many people navigate this semester at the law school and beyond. In addition, Chris worked with his staff to administer the law school hardship fund this semester, a much needed help for our students. His colleagues credit him as being central to the law school ability to hold in-person classes this fall. Chris, thank you so much for your many efforts. Congratulations. We're also honoring Randy Tarkenton from the Department of Housing and Residential Experience. Randy has been involved in many projects in response to COVID-19, from contract tracing to environmental design to quarantine and isolation systems for students. He has worked tirelessly with campus partners to build and support a testing program that has proven very effective in helping Vanderbilt maintain low positivity rates. Since students returned to campus, he has worked 16-hour days, seven days a week, directly with students to implement our protocols and help students navigate the challenges of this semester. Randy, thank you so much for your ongoing dedication to the Vanderbilt community. We could not be where we are without you. Congratulations. We are also honoring Randy's colleague, Alison Matarese, also from the department, 
of housing and residential experience. In the spring, Allison organized a housing and assigning pro assignment process for students who were unable to leave campus, focusing on their comfort, health, and safety. She also oversaw the process for first year in upper division housing assignments, as well as the systems surrounding fall move-in. Quite a task. At every phase, she has maintained compliance with our campus safety protocol. Thank you, Allison, for your tremendous service to our university. Congratulations again to all of you, to all of our individual award winners, for your tremendous service and your efforts and commitment to Vanderbilt. And I now will present the awards for exceptional team efforts. Collaboration has always been one of our defining values here at Vanderbilt. In the last few months, these teams, these groups, have taken this meaning to new heights. They have shown profound coordination and camaraderie, proving that great breakthroughs happen when people come together. Today, we are awarding Anchor Down Step Up Excellence Awards to 10 exceptional groups. As part of the award, each team member will also receive a monetary prize. For each group, we will illustrate the names of key team members on the corresponding slides. In many cases, these individuals served in leadership roles and are representative of an even larger group of staff members who have made profound contributions. First up, we're honoring a number of managers and administrators from our schools and colleges. These staff members localized the university's health and safety protocols to meet the needs of the students, faculty, and staff within their schools. They posted signage to direct foot traffic in buildings, measured rooms and spaces for physical distancing protocols, and moved furniture in classroom and shared spaces. They worked tirelessly throughout the spring, summer, and fall to make it possible for our students and faculty to be on campus teaching and learning together. Congratulations to each of you, and thank you for making our campus a welcoming space for students, faculty, and your fellow staff. Next, I would like to honor staff members from the Center for Teaching. This group implemented our Bright Space technology and guided Vanderbilt's overall transition to remote instruction in March. With two days' notice, they created and delivered in-person and virtual training sessions for faculty, many of whom had never before taught remotely. Since March, they've maintained strong levels of engagement while also finding new ways to improve upon our online systems. They have co-led a new online course design institute, implemented complex instructional tools, and served as the face of adaptive teaching at Vanderbilt. Many thanks for your tremendous efforts and congratulations. Next, we're honoring the truly monumental behind the scenes work from the campus circulation and daily operations team. From planning to implementation, the campus circulations and daily operations team took a lead role in preparing our campus. They developed building protocols, circulation patterns, wayfinding methods, and disinfecting procedures for belongings and facilities that have been instrumental in helping our community navigate a safe return. Thank you all for taking on these tremendous endeavors and congratulations on this well-deserved award. Next, we would like to honor a team from Campus Dining. When many students left campus in March, this team worked tirelessly to ensure that those students who remained on campus had three warm, nutritious meals each day. They also rallied their teams to prepare enough, sir, to prepare enough meals to serve the facilities and public safety staff members who are performing essential duties on campus. These individuals spent countless hours walking locations, implementing new circulation plans, adjusting menus, launching new to-go no, to meal programs, and much, much more. To these four assistant directors and to all of our colleagues in campus dining, thank you and congratulations. We're also honoring a team from custodial services for their monumental effort this year. The housekeeping team has been working nonstop 
to regularly disinfect more than 3 million square feet of campus buildings, including every type of space imaginable. Often carrying around packs of disinfectant, they have earned the nickname the Ghostbusters for their work to keep us safe as possible here on campus. They each received specialized training for this assignment, and we are grateful for their dedication, pride, and professional professionalism that each, each one of them brings to their work every day. Congratulations to the Ghostbusters in custodial services. And it is now my pleasure to recognize the COVID-19 team leaders from the Division of Communications. From engaging the campus community by creating and executing the innovative Anchor Down Step Up campaign, to developing and constantly adapting our Return to Campus website, dashboard, and newsletter, to producing and cre creating videos, stories, social media content, and countless emails and webinars to keep our community informed and connected. This team and their colleagues made sure we had the information we needed when we needed it. Thanks to their leadership, effort, and expertise, Vanderbilt Communications set the bar for colleges and universities nationally in COVID-19 response communications, and they have been essential to the university's successful management of the pandemic. Congratulations, communications COVID-19 team leaders. Next, we're honoring team members from the Vanderbilt Public Health Central Command Center, the COVID Center. These 13 staff members from across the university helped to coordinate university testing strategies, contact tracing, and support for individuals who have tested positive or have been exposed to COVID-19. Many of these individuals have been working seven days a week since the spring, managing data and collaborating with campus partners, including the Office of the Dean of Students, to provide critical resources for those learning, living, and working at Vanderbilt. In addition to these staff and their colleagues, I also want to take a moment to, want, I, I also want to take a special moment to thank the nursing faculty and students led by Senior Associate Dean for Clinical and Community Partnerships, Pan Jones. They have been essential partners and team members. Thank you to all members of the COVID Command Center for all you have done and continue to do for the university and many congratulations on your well-deserved award. Next, I'd like to honor the undergraduate student orientation team. This year, the group faced the unique challenge of engaging in an early spring planning process for an unprecedented fall semester in the midst of a global pandemic. Moreover, there were tasks with moving their new student orientation processes and peer monitoring programs, which they had only recently redesigned to a user-friendly online platform. They rapidly mobilized, researching creative options, developing curriculum with faculty leaders, and communicating all changes to student peer mentors. This group's effort enabled our students to embark with enthusiasm on a school year that held many, many unknowns for each one of them. Many thanks to you for stepping up to these formidable challenges and congratulations. I'd now like to honor five staff members from the university's registrar's office. Over the last five months, these, these individuals have managed complex and sudden changes to the academic calendar with impressive collaboration and organization. In addition to rebuilding the entire fall 2020 calendar, for each of our 10 schools and colleges, the team has managed revisions to the registration process and adjusted all offerings for the summer 2020 schedule. They're currently hard at work on our calendar for the spring. Throughout many efforts and tight deadlines, they have provided outstanding service to our students and faculty going above and beyond to support our core academic mission. Thanks to each of you and the entire office of the University of, of, the, the, entire office of the University Registrar for your many contribution during this unprecedented time. And finally, I'm delighted to honor three staff members from VUIT Classroom Technology. By training faculty and equipping classrooms 
with enhanced technology, this team assured us that we would be able to provide an excellent education to our students regardless of whether they chose to study remotely or on campus. This summer, the team worked swiftly to perform a much higher workload than usual. They re-equipped 78 classrooms with enhanced audiovisual packages, more than double the amount of spaces they would typically need to address under less unusual circumstances. Thanks to each of you and the entire VUIT team for your outstanding efforts. Congratulations to the many members of our exceptional teams. Your work made all the difference. And before we end today's assembly, there's one more person I'd like to thank. This person has had a hand in every effort I've mentioned today. Since the pandemic, and even long before, he has worked around the clock seven days a week. Many people, myself included, think of him as the mayor of Vanderbilt. There are rumors that he even slept on the couch in his office some nights, waking up early the next morning to tackle the next day's work. He has managed complex projects while never losing sight of the people behind those projects. His unflagging energy, positivity, patience, and compassion inspire all who work with him. He has put the safety of our community first while also upholding our mission to provide an empowering education. I am delighted to present today today's final award to Vice Chancellor Eric Kopstein. Eric, thank you so much for your leadership, your guidance, and your determination. And it's only fitting that I turn the program back to you to close out today's assembly. Well, um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, Chancellor Deermeyer, for that recognition of the wonderful people here at Vanderbilt. Um, it's humbling to have the opportunity to operate during such a challenging and important moment in the history of Vanderbilt University. And I also want to thank you, Caroline, for your outstanding remarks earlier. I just want to also just really congratulate all of the staff who were recognized with the Anchor Down Step Up Awards today. I've had the pleasure of working with many of you directly. In fact, I know I've spoken with several of you almost every single day since the beginning of March. These dedicated individuals also represent only a few of the incredible people who comprise the staff of Vanderbilt University. Also, as we wrap up today, I encourage you all to complete the event survey that you'll see in the chat for this Zoom. In addition, we'll make a recording of the event today that will be available to share with any colleagues who are not able to attend live. Thank you to everyone for being here today, and as always, anchor down.